let us compare spiral galaxies with what are called planar spiral inertial microfluidic laboratory on chip devices using our Milky Way galaxy as the primary example. These devices are used by doctors and scientists to detect, identify, process, and analyze cells, DNA, chemical particulates, and other matter at the microscopic level. These processes include cellular and DNA and RNA separation and purification, amplification, sequencing and synthesis, plus metering and filtration of molecules, and what are a few applications for microfluidic lab on chip devices. Although these lab on chips come in many different shapes, I am only going to use spiral lab on chip devices as examples in this presentation. And also bear in mind that there is a theory out there called the superfluid vacuum theory which theorizes that the interstellar vacuum at the microscopic level is some kind of superfluid that defies the conventional laws of physics. And also bear in mind that absolutely none of the pictorial comparisons in this video are being presented with size and scale as a factor. Because as we look at these comparisons we cannot deny the amazing similarities between our Milky Way galaxy and these spiral microfluidic lab on ship platforms. The similarities between these devices and our Milky Way galaxy includes the locations and flows of stars and planets through the galactic rings plus the location of the inlet and outlet valves that we see here with the location of the black hole at the center of our galaxy comparable to the location of a central inlet valve in a microfluidic device with the location of our solar system comparable to the location of the outlet valves. The same could probably be said of the location of any solar system in our Milky Way galaxy with the location of our solar system being the only example I am using our solar system appears to be an integral part of some kind of gigantic microfluidic recirculation device like the comparison you see here especially when considering that billions of years from now all the matter in the Milky Way galaxy will eventually be broken down and much of this matter at some point will be recirculated through the black hole at the center of the Milky Way including the dust and ashes of our long dead planet and even our bodies themselves. Now let us have a closer look at the inlet valves of these microfluidic devices. With the black hole at the center of the Milky Way galaxy being the only comparison I will use here, although the galaxy is full of black holes, by the way. We can see in these pictures how the supermassive black hole at the center of our Milky Way galaxy is pulling in dust, gas, and probably even entire planets and suns, and so forth. This dynamic is no different than the way the inlet valves in the microfluidic devices you see here pull in cells, DNA, and chemical particulates and other matter for processing, separation, sequencing, analysis, etc., etc., and sometimes even for redistribution. Some of these devices fall into the category of nanofluidic devices, but I am not going to differentiate between microfluidic and nanofluidic in this video, except to note this comparison of what is called a microfluidic to nanofluidic gradient interfacing area with the dynamics of black holes in the space that surrounds them, with the black holes playing the role of the nano interfaces from the much larger micro-macro 
universe. It seems that the similarities between the structure and dynamics of spiral microfluidic lab on ship devices and spiral galaxies like our Milky Way are too similar to be coincidental, especially when we focus on the relationship of their central black holes to the orbital flows of atoms and gas, dust, and even suns, planets, and moons through the inner and outer spiral arms of the Milky Way in orbit around a central black hole. Just like the flows of cells, DNA, and particulates flowing through the inner and outer rings of the spiral biological and chemical lab on chip devices you see in this video. It is also significant that the chemical composition of these devices include lots of silicone, glass, and other elements that scientists have detected dispersed throughout the Milky Way galaxy. And as previously noted, some specific applications for some of these lab on disk and chip devices include genetic and chemical particulate identification and manipulation. There is absolutely no difference whatsoever between the flows of the dust and gas and even the suns, the planets and moons through the rings of the spiral galaxies and the flows of particulates, DNA and cells through the rings of spiral microfluidic lab on chip devices. There is absolutely no difference whatsoever. Without forgetting the fluidic nature of the universe, all the microfluidic lab on chip devices you see here are based on a concept called inertial microfluidics, which is based on a concept called hydrodynamic lift, which helps move fluids and the matter within these fluids through these devices built in microfluidic structures in a dynamic that I presume would have something to do with the formation movements and locations of the stars and planets and moons inside their galactic rings. This brings us into another area of discussion where we will now compare our Milky Way galaxy to what are called centrifugal microfluidic lab on disks, which do almost the same thing as inertial lab on chip devices except that these lab on disk devices use centrifugal force to move fluids through their microfluidic structures. Key words centrifugal microfluidic lab on disk platforms. These devices operate under the same principle as computer disks insofar that spinning bio disks store, track, and manipulate cells, DNA, and particulates in spiral and, and near spiral tracks, just like computer disks store and manipulate data in spiral tracks. Centrifugal disks and data disks also respectively rotate at speeds that range between hundreds of revolutions per minute and thousands of revolutions per minute. The four or five or more rings of our Milky Way galaxy are estimated by astronomers to rotate at their own varying speeds, which supposedly vary between 200 and 250,000 kilometers per second. This translates into an average speed of eight and a half million miles per minute, I think. But the Milky Way is spinning at a dizzying speed. And from the outside looking down at our Milky Way galaxy, our galaxy would literally be a blur, spinning like a centrifugal microfluidic lab on a disk, with ourselves serving as just another set of specimens on this disk. The centrifugal forces generated by the spins of spiral galaxies like our own would cause these galaxies' disks to fly apart, were it not for their invisible casings of dark matter that is holding these galaxies together. 
Centrifugal forces also cause spiral galaxies like our Milky Way to be flat and round, like data disks and bio disks. And I don't doubt for one second that the powerful centrifugal force generated by the spin of the Milky Way galaxy would have everything to do with the location of our solar system and ourselves right here at the tail end of the Orion arm which is also referred to as the Orion Spur, the Orion Bridge, plus other names. The Orion Spur harbors the nebula from which our Sun and the rest of our solar system was birthed over a period of billions of years, resulting in its relatively symmetrical location in the mil in the Milky Way galaxy, like the equally symmetrical location of the sample and sensor and detection and mixing chambers and so forth in these microfluidic lab on disks that we see here, which have many applications, which all involve biological and chemical detection, identification, analysis, processing, and so forth. Most structurally complex spiral galaxies are believed by astronomers and astrophysicists to contain infrastructure of many spurs and bridges that are made of and that serve as conduits for atomic hydrogen and probably other elements that connect and flow through the major spiral arms. With the longest of these spurs are bridges our Orion component crossing and connecting both the Perseus and Norma arms on its trip somewhere to the outer edge of the galaxy where the Orion arm supposedly, supposedly terminates. The Orion spur slash arm originates in or near the Sagittarius arm and runs through the Perseus and Norma arms probably introducing gas and dust and even stars from other parts of the Milky Way, not unlike the microfluidic channels you see in these microfluidic devices, but only if the resolution in these pictures is high enough to allow you to see this. This part of the galaxy appears to contain several bridges and spurs that interconnect the Sagittarius arm, the Perseus arm, and the Norma arm, with the so-called Shepherd Spur or bridge connecting the galactic center with the Norma arm as the Norma arm spirals around and intersects with the Orion arm, as we can see here at the top left. Another interesting facet about the Orion sector is what is called the Perseus transit, which the Orion spur seems to pass through the Perseus arm and intersect with the Cygnus arm, or so it seems, and this is a mirror image of the dynamics of these microfluidic channel device, devices you see here. This means that the inner and outer rings and arms of much of the Milky Way galaxy is interconnected by a system of spurs and bridges that is probably facilitating the distribution of matter to various regions of the galaxy, just like the channels in these and other microfluidic devices, which are dedicated to particle and cell separation, infiltration, biosensing, and so forth as previously mentioned. The Milky Way galaxy is a very elaborate microfluidic lab on a disk of some kind, where the stars, planets, and dust and gas are being channeled through the Milky Way's various bridges and spurs in accordance to the forces of inertia, gravity, magnetism, and the rest of the forces that are at work in the Milky Way galaxy as well as in 
microfluidic bio disks of all kinds. And some of the bio disks on the market today are what are called optical bio disks, which use a UV light emitting diode and or laser beam as analytics or excitation or breakdown agents or some other role that would apply to the spiral galaxies that are being bombarded by waves of UV radiation from nearby quasars, pulsars, or gigantic stars, or some other source of hard radiation, which would more than likely be instrumental in galactic evolution, including the evolution of the suns and planets in these galaxies. Without forgetting what you have just seen and heard, now we must briefly explore how scientists and engineers have recently merged centrifugal microfluidic biosensor disks with what are called microsphere biosensors. This fusion of technology is just another method used by doctors and scientists to detect disease with more applications to follow I'm sure and with the earth being the only planet I will use as an example although any living planet or moon would suffice. This means that the Earth is a microsphere biosensor merged with the much larger bio disk of our Milky Way galaxy as a little sensor inside of a big sensor, a little machine inside of a big machine, just like in these pictures. The Earth, more specifically, appears to be in part the equivalent of what clinical scientists and doctors call a microsphere resonator spectroscope biosensor. And all life on Earth is the equivalent of gigantic cells in the microsphere sensor we call Mother Earth. This would involve a sensing technique called cavity and enhanced spectrography or something similar. Now there is an incredible variety and level of complexity of microsphere biosensor spectroscopes out there on the market. These microsphere biosensors are little more than tiny machines that are used by doctors and scientists as just another set of tools to study and manipulate cells and other particulates using the forces of light and or magnetism as analytics, excitation, and manipulation agents. The most common types of microsphere sensors are called optical and or magnetic microsphere resonator spectroscope biosensors including dielectric microfluidic resonator spectroscopes plus any number of other types with the sun being the light source and the moon being the optical pickup sensor or camera or related role which I will get to later. Another reason the earth appears to be some kind of optical magnetic microsphere resonator biosensor is because the Sun is perpetually generating a gigantic electromagnetic field of shifting frequencies of light and magnetism that perpetually engulf the Earth and interact with and affect the electromagnetic field of the Earth plus the electromagnetic fields of all life on Earth. Although the magnetic and resonance fields respectively generated by the Sun and the Earth do not generate anywhere near the magnetic field strength as a magnetic resonance imaging bioscanner, by the way, this does not negate the significance of what is called the planetary Schumann resonance field slash cavity especially when considering that the Schumann magnetic resonances vibrate at the same frequency as our heart rhythms and brain waves in a planet-wide dynamic that probably applies to lower life forms as well. 
the Schumann resonance field cavity that you see here is said by scientists to be generated by electrical excitation stimulated by electric currents in lightning that is supposedly perpetually striking high up in the ionosphere with the Schumann resonance cavity existing in the area between the surface of the earth and the ionosphere. With the ionosphere serving as the equivalent of an optical waveguide or something to that effect for electromagnetic frequencies in the very low band as they are circulated within the reflective surface of the ionosphere or something to that effect just like the electromagnetic fields in these microsphere sensor cavities that I am showing you is circulated via an optical fiber waveguide that encircle these microspheres sort of like how Earth's Schumann isospheric waveguide encircles the Earth this brings us to a biosensing technique called whispering gallery mode this technique in part involves the use of light being circulated within the reflective surfaces of these microsphere cavities in order to enable doctors and scientists to analyze cells and molecules from every conceivable angle, often in tandem with the forces of magnetism. This biosensing technique overlaps into the biosensing technique called surface enhanced Raman spectrography. This is some kind of biophotonic, biomedical, light scattering, optical biosensing mechanism that includes a dynamic called Rayleigh scattering, both of which are scattering dynamics with biomedical diagnostic applications that I do not understand well enough yet to elaborate on except to say that the dynamics of Raymond and Rayleigh scattering are transpiring inside Earth's atmosphere in part caused by sunlight and other solar radiation interacting with the molecules in Earth's atmosphere and probably the molecules that make up our bodies as well. This is a dynamic that is almost a mere image of the dynamics of these microsphere biosensors that you see in these frames. And for all we know, the ring of magnetic belts that encircle the Earth, aka the Van Allen belts, could be serving as the equivalent of some kind of waveguides for the UV light flowing in from the Sun, insofar that more than a few light waves are photons and electrons from the Sun would have to be circulating around the Earth trapped inside the magnetic rings of the Van Allen belts which are made of highly charged particles that follow Earth's magnetic field lines I think and they could be picking up information on Earth's inhabitants not too much unlike the rings of these whispering gallery mode microsphere biosensors you see in these frames. Other similarities include the fact that the structure of these spherical bi biosensors are structured like the Earth and the other planets as we can see here with the different layers with humans and all other life forms on Earth organized like samples, specimens, analytes, etc. inside the biosensor microsphere called Earth that uses the combined forces of light, magnetism, and electricity as biosensing agents. These are but a few reasons why it appears that Earth is some kind of optical magnetic resonance microsphere spectroscope especially with regard to Earth's electromagnetic and gravitational relationship with the Sun and Moon and probably the rest of the planets in our solar system. 
The sun is obviously playing the role as the equivalent of a laser diode or other emitter of light radiation used in the optical biosensor equipment we are discussing. And consider the moon and the outer planets to be optical pickup slash lens devices for this biosensor equipment. The position of the moon relative to the position of the earth initially appears to be some kind of spherical lens merged with what is called a CCD chip, but spherical. CCD stands for charge coupled device, which is a semiconductor electronic digital imaging chip that converts photons to electrons using what is called the photoelectric effect, the dynamics of which I will not elaborate on. The moon also still produces a very weak electromagnetic field, just like any self-respecting CCD chip would. And CCD chips are used as camera photo chips in spectroscopes, microscopes, telescopes, and other optical imaging and sensing equipment. and this includes near field microscope lenses with the moon perhaps being a near field microscope lens merged with a digital imaging chip of some kind as small parts of some kind of optical imaging and sensor device that is disguised as our solar system not unlike the random examples you see in these frames with the sun and planets around the earth playing their respective roles as light and radiation sources and sensors and detectors and so forth. Let us turn our attention for a few minutes to the pretty coloring of the outer gas giant planets of Saturn, Jupiter, Uranus and Neptune. And let us notice the pretty coloring of these lenses and digital imaging chips, including the colorful bands that are nearly identical to the pretty bands of dust and gas swirling around the gas giant planets. And remember, the geochemical and atmospheric chemical compositions of the gas outer giant planets are more or less the same as the chemical composition of digital imaging chips. The solar system in its entirety is in part some kind of hyperspectral sensing or imaging system that is exquisitely sensitive with the outer gas giant planets playing primary roles in this sensing and imaging system that defies the imagination. This includes the rings of the gas giant planets. Focus on the pretty colors. The geochemical and atmospheric chemical composition of the planets respectively is the same composition as electronic equipment, including optical equipment as well as communications equipment. All the planets and moons are made of silicone oxide and dioxide, plus metals and their oxides, including iron, aluminum, magnesium, nickel, gold, silver, and the rest of the elements used to produce electronic equipment of any kind. The planets are not made of cotton candy, is the point I am trying to make here. Where it gets even more interesting is that the living planets, moons, and the sun that make up our solar system are the equivalent of radio transceiver antennas as parts of some kind of radio transceiver unit of our solar system. The living planets and moons are organized like a radio, like as if radio transceiver coils on a radio transceiver unit. They also generate the same types of electromagnetic field 
They are also internally structured like spherical transceiver antennas. Especially when we look at the layers and cores of the planets compared to the structure of these antenna, these spherical antennas, all of which produce electromagnetic fields. With the Sun playing the role as some kind of spherical plasma antenna, router, or relay unit of some kind. With the living planets and moons being what are called spherical Lundberg lens antennas or something in the ballpark, the dynamics of which I will not elaborate on here, except to say that plasma antennas use ionized gas instead of metal elements like conventional antennas, and our sun is a gigantic ball of gas of largely superconducting plasma whose radiation is interacting with and passing through and bouncing off the earth and the rest of the planets and the moons in our solar system as if they were in part some kind of spherical receiver antenna units of some kind. Beyond that, it could be observed that our solar system appears to be, in part, some kind of optical and radio frequency communications array merged with an optical biosensing array and it is relevant to note here that CMOS chips are used as receiver chips in what is called multi-channel and multi-gigabit optical data communications equipment which would probably include satellite communications networks And this brings us to the fact that the gas giant outer planets roughly resemble and function like these hemispherical satellite lens antennas. And if they are indeed antennas of some kind, then the vast sizes and distances of the outer planets relative to the Earth and the rest of the inner planets would render the gas giant outer planets capable of picking up distant electromagnetic signals including radio and optical signals not just from the Earth and perhaps its inhabitants but from the suns and distant solar systems including in other galaxies perhaps and perhaps converting these signals to electrical and magnetic signals that are subsequently relayed back to the Earth, to us Earthlings perhaps. As a combination of lens and antenna structures including hemispherical lenses plus satellite lens antennas I think this solar system is a biological imaging array merged with a communications array which could also be said for countless other solar systems throughout the universe. And as we move up to the galactic level, not much has changed insofar that our Milky Way galaxy also half resembles a hemispherical satellite lens antenna of some kind. especially when we compare its bulge and ring structure and dynamics to these examples of hemispherical satellite lens antennas. With the Milky Way's central bulge surrounded by its ring structure, in which our solar system might be playing the part as the feed assembly component you see in this picture here. Another way of looking at this is that our planets, moons, and the sun that make up our solar system are arranged exactly like the elements in a planar spiral Archimedes antenna, and there are no two ways about this fact. 
just like the suns and planets and moons are arranged inside the spiral arms of the Milky Way galaxy. The same could be said for other spiral galaxies. There are also no two ways about the fact that the relative positions of the Earth, the Sun, and the rest of the solar system relative to the giant black hole at the center of the Milky Way on their orbit around this black hole is an abstract mirror image of this cellular communication network with the main antenna at its center. The same dynamic applies to these microfluidic biochip devices as previously explored in so far that the stars in the spiral galaxies like our Milky Way are arranged in rings around a central black hole not unlike the cells in these microfluidic devices in orbit around the inlet valve with our solar system being in just the right place for the outlet valves or so it seems and here is a computerized centrifugal microfluidic biodisc device with a computer at its center just like the core of the Milky Way is supposed to be a computer according to Scientific American just like radio frequency identification tags have computer chips at their core as well that store the data while the antenna rings that encircle these cores transmit or receive the data in a dynamic that includes the Milky Way especially when we look at the structural similarities between the Milky Way and these radio frequency identification tags in a list of comparisons that include these particle accelerators including synchrotrons with their booster rings at or near their centers with the outer rings circulating with particles just like the stars circulating within the rings of spiral galaxies and with our solar system in the same relative position as the targets of these particle accelerators just like the positions of the outlet valves and detection areas in microfluidic biosensor chips and bio disks in what are a few examples of the technologies that appear to be synthesized into our Milky Way and other spiral galaxies and although these galaxies are not genuine cyclotron or synchrotron accelerators the Milky Way does nonetheless generate synchrotron radiation and the stars and other particles inside spiral galaxies are trapped and frequently colliding inside the rings of these galaxies not so much unlike the particles in cyclotron and synchrotron particle accelerators there are also no two ways about the fact that the earth is some kind of cyclotron with the cyclotron motion transpiring in the rings of the Van Allen radiation belts that encircle the Earth and charged particles that magnetize Earth's belts, aka magnetosphere, I believe. The same could be said of the other living planets with magnetospheres that could be any of these technologies you see here and with no regard for structure or context as we move along we need to consider Earth's magnetic belts or rings as more than just shielding from hard solar and cosmic radiation this more than just shielding role includes some kind of MRI type bioscanner rings plus electromagnetic field sensor rings like these here as well as radio transceiver coil rings in what is a fusion of technology that involves multi-purpose electromagnetic field lines that include those produced by the human body believe it or not the electromagnetic rings that encircle humans are just another set of sensors and antennas or so it appears 
what we are looking at here is a system of little machines inside big machines, antennas inside antennas, and sensors inside sensors that all generate electromagnetic fields with the rotational and churning movements in the cores of the living planets and moons and suns and galaxies being the primary source of these electromagnetic fields which are the same as radio signal. This radio signal theory being our focus now applies to the bioelectromagnetic fields produced by humans which are generated by electrochemical reactions in the human body and organs and cells therein which are just another set of radio antennas that are generating and perhaps receiving radio signals and this antenna theory would include the electromagnetic fields of the DNA molecules in living cells which are said to have their own positive and negative electromagnetic fields not unlike radio antennas DNA molecules could very well be helical radio receiver or transceiver antennas perhaps this antenna concept extends to each of the organs in our bodies including our brains and hearts all of which produce the equivalent of radio signals. This so-called bioelectromagnetism includes our so-called auras and the chakras therein and it seems that they might even play a role as some kind of optical transmitter antennas with their pretty colors the many different bioelectromagnetic signals produced by the bodies of life forms throughout the technoverse would be instrumental in enabling the super advanced extraterrestrial beings who engineered or inherited the technoverse to monitor these life forms from afar via these organisms unique electromagnetic biometric signatures combined with the source relay destination network of the type you see here which would link them through a system of electromagnetic fields inside electromagnetic fields inside electromagnetic fields that serve as relays it is also significant that the minute trace metals and other compounds naturally found in the flesh and blood of all life on earth such as iron gold silver gadolinium iodine phosphorus and other elements are used as contrasting agents and tracers by doctors in bioscanner equipment which includes dyes oxides and the rest of the chemicals used as biomedical tracers bio tags and so forth that are specifically used for medical diagnostic imaging and scientific biological research at all levels full body imaging down to molecular imaging of single viruses and molecules look at the electromagnetic field of humans otherwise known as auras compared to these pictures of laboratory mice that have been injected with the above mentioned chemicals which are usually ingested or injected or inhaled by patients and specimens just before they find themselves inside bioscanner machinery all of these chemicals are found naturally in the minutest amounts in the cells in all life on earth including ourselves and because a picture is worth a thousand words I included this picture of a lab rat that was injected with medical diagnostic contrasting or tracer agents called quantum dots otherwise known as synthetic atoms which as we can see produced the next best thing to organ chakras in this rat using many of the same chemical elements that are found in trace amounts in the human body with our auras and chakras enabling the engineers of the technoverse to monitor our physical and mental health and bearing in mind the previously mentioned fact that the earth is a spherical optical magnetic resonance microsphere biosensor of some kind
We need to consider that the chemical composition of the air we breathe in Earth's atmosphere contains trace amounts of helium, fluorine, and other gases, or the derivatives thereof, that are also respectively used as biomedical chemical tracers and signal enhancing contrasting agents that are usually inhaled by patients just before they find themselves being scanned by MRI and PET and CAT scanner and other bioscanners at the hands of doctors in these, in these doctors efforts to diagnose and treat cancer and other diseases. The magnetic rings that encircle the earth are called the Van Allen radiation belts as if humans are indeed being monitored and manipulated then what you are seeing is a glimpse of the technology on how this is being facilitated the magnetic rings that encircle the earth in conjunction with the dynamics of earth's relationship to the sun is not quite a mere image of the technologies that you see. The optical and magnetic fields are not nearly as powerful, but I think I've made my point. If you like this video, give it the thumbs up, leave questions and comments, and subscribe.